Hello, this video is definitely one of my very favorite topics in geometry, similarity in right triangles. And do keep in mind that everything demonstrated for the particular uh, construction I have will apply to any right triangle that we construct. So let's start by looking at this right triangle. First, let's see where the right angle is for this large right triangle. This is the constructed altitude to the hypotenuse of this large right triangle, and we get two more right triangles right there. So we now have one of the two angles needed to prove that all three are similar. All right, let's hide these right angles. And the red angle right here and here is congruent, meaning this red angle is congruent to this red angle. This is both an angle in the small right triangle, with this being the right angle, and it's also part of the large right triangle, where this is the right angle. So with this red angle alone, we have enough to prove with angle angle that the small right triangle, this one, is similar to the large one. So we now have enough information to prove that this large blue right triangle is similar to this small brown right triangle. Okay, let's hide the red angles. And let's look at the other acute angles we have. These green angles are congruent to each other, and because of these right angles, we now have our angle-angle shortcut to prove that this small right triangle is similar to this medium-sized right triangle. And now because of transitive property, since the large triangle is similar to the small triangle, and the small triangle is similar to the medium triangle, we can conclude that the medium triangle is similar to the large triangle. Thank you. Now, part two of the demo. Uh, the first thing I want to do to show you another little visual proof for this similarity relationship is I want to duplicate this large blue triangle. So let's do that. All right, here's our duplicate. And now what I'm going to do is make a reflection of this duplicate. And I'm going to merge these two vertices for the 90 degree angles. And now by changing the size and rotating this, I will fit the adjusted blue triangle to match exactly the medium. Thanks again. And one more rotation and dilation and we'll see that the copy of the big blue triangle will also match exactly ta-da, with the small triangle. Now on to the proportions. We have many proportions that we can form from these given measures. And remember again, we start with a right triangle, we construct the height to the hypotenuse, and that gives us two more similar right triangles to the big one. Here is our first A is to B, as H is to Y, as X is to H. And for all three triangles, this first ratio corresponds to the large triangle, the second to the medium size, and the third to the small triangle. What we have is A to B, and for the large triangle, that's the short leg compared to the long leg. In the medium-sized triangle, the short leg and long leg are H to Y, so that's our second ratio. And in the small triangle, the same relationship is X to H, short leg to long leg. Next proportion, short leg to hypotenuse. For the large triangle, the short leg is side A, and the hypotenuse is side C. So this C is this entire hypotenuse for the large triangle. 
and that's A to C, short leg to hypotenuse. In the medium-sized triangle, that is short leg H to hypotenuse B. So that's our second ratio. In the small triangle, short leg X compared to hypotenuse A. Nice drawing. And what I did here is I repeated the large ratio again, A to C, because I'm going to use this part of the proportion a little later. All right, the last proportion. We're looking now at the ratio of long leg to hypotenuse. And again, for the large triangle, that would be length B to C. B is the long leg of the large right triangle, and C is the hypotenuse, B to C. That corresponds for the medium-sized triangle, Y to B. That's long leg to hypotenuse. For the small triangle, that's H to A. Long leg of the small to hypotenuse. All right, some important vocabulary now. The geometric mean. Each one of these proportions has a geometric mean problem in it. And now what we're going to do is we're going to uncover those. The first is right here. And I'm going to use symmetric property just to rewrite this as x is to h as h is to y. I just switched the order of these two ratios. The reason being, I want these two that are the same, the same value in neighboring numerator and denominator. These are now in the location of the means. And what we have here is h is the geometric mean of x and y. An equation we can write from this cross products would be h squared, which is h times h, is xy. And to find the distance h, it would be the square root of xy. And our geometric mean is always positive by definition. So when we take square root of xy, we only take the principal root, the positive root. In our second proportion, we have another geometric mean problem. This time, a and a, the same value, is in the location of the means. So what we would say here is, a is the geometric mean of x and c. Here's our equation. a squared is x times c. And its distance will be the square root of x times c. Our last geometric mean problem is right here. I'll rewrite it using symmetric property. Here are the means. They are the same value b. So for this, we would say, that's right, b is the geometric mean of y and c. So our quick review. The large blue triangle is similar to the small brown triangle, which is similar to the green triangle. So using transitive property, the green is also similar to the blue. h is the geometric mean of x and y. a is the geometric mean of x and c. And b is the geometric mean of y and c. Thank you very much. And uh, thanks for watching. And do keep practicing.